Shalom, everyone. Praise the Lord and thank you for uh, joining class. Um, on Monday, we began studying Romans chapter 5. Uh, we'll continue uh, studying Romans chapter 5 today. And before we do that, can uh, one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Lead us in prayer. John Paul, can you lead us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given to us, Lord. We again come in unto your table of mercy, Lord, for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and attitude, skills. So, Lord, use our teacher as a vessel to communicate what you've put onto her heart as in the advancement of the kingdom. Lord, I also pray for the learners, me inclusive, Lord, to really put into what we are going to learn into consideration and at heart, and also not to be here as only, but also doers. We do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lubega. So just as a recap, in verses 1 to 4, we Paul mentions the results of having been justified. He says, what are the things that we have received as a result of us being justified by faith? So in the previous um, chapter, he mentioned that, you know, um, uh, we are not made righteous or we are not justified by keeping the law, uh, but with, through righteousness, uh, by faith in Christ Jesus, that uh, through, uh, through faith in Christ Jesus, that we have been made righteous, we have been made, uh, we have been justified. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about in chapter five, uh, what we have received as a result of having been uh, justified by faith in Christ Jesus. And in verses five to eight, uh, you know, Paul talks about the love that God has for. Um, us um, and um, you know he's and he mentions uh, Christ died for us so what is the result of Christ's death uh, the result of Christ's death is that we have been reconciled uh, back to God he, he mentions that we were enemies uh, with God we were far away from God uh, we were in sin um, but what happened as a result of Christ's death on the cross uh, he talks about that we have been reconciled to God and he mentions this in verses 9 to um, 11 okay so we looked at uh, verses um, uh, 1 to uh, 10 uh, on Monday we'll continue from verse 11 onwards okay one of you please read Romans chapter 5 verse 11 please Romans chapter 5, verse 11. Verse 11, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, therefore, just as through one man sin entered... But this was life, 11, uh, Rosalind, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So in verses 6 to 11, uh, Paul is basically saying that Christ died for us. So who did Christ die for? He says that he Christ died for the ungodly, for those who were without strength, who were sinners, uh, who were enemies uh, with God, and also those who are, um, you know, um, far away from um, eternal life. Uh, so he says that we were saved from all of this and we were saved from uh, eternal judgment as well. And in verse 12, he tells us more that has happened on the cross. So verses 12 to 21 is very unique. Uh, we don't find what Paul is writing uh, here uh, in any other place in the New Testament. We don't find what Paul is writing in these verses, uh, verses 12 to 21, we don't find it anywhere else in the New Testament. 
and uh, you know Paul calls this truth or he refers to this truth that he's presenting in these verses 12 to 21 as the truth of identification okay the truth of identification um, or he's presenting this truth as the identification what is our identification who we are in Christ and Paul says that you know um, uh, the truth that he presents here is he Paul says that every person is affected by one man and who is that one man Adam and he says what happened to that one man affected the rest of the human race similarly he says what happened to the other man and who's the other man he he presents Jesus Christ you know uh, uh, what happened to the other man Jesus Christ or what the other man Jesus Christ brought for us is also made available to the rest of the human race so in these verses it's very interesting truths that Paul is presenting um, uh, it, it, and, and this passage, as I said, is very, very unique because Paul does not write or mention a, anywhere about this in, uh, in the rest of Scripture and nowhere else in Scripture in the New Testament will read about this. Of course, he mentions a little bit about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which we will look at uh, a little later on. Um, you know, but here what Paul mentions is you know he's talking about our identification the truth of our identification and he builds on this in romans chapter 6 um, on how this truth of identification of who we are you know uh, affects us as believers so he he's presenting the truth of identification here in uh, romans chapter 5 and then in Romans chapter 6, he goes on to present how this truth of identification affects the believers today. Okay, so we look at um, or we study uh, Romans chapter 5 verses uh, uh, 12 to 21. Um, we look at each verse uh, in detail. So um, can somebody please read verse 12, Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Basically, in uh, chapter 5, verses 12 to 19, he's talking about who we are in Adam and who we are in Christ. So he's presenting uh, uh, our identification, the truth of our identification of who we are in Adam and who we are in Christ. So verse 12, can one of you please read? Therefore, Therefore just, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus David and thus death spread to all men because all sinned amen amen thank you Rebecca. so he paul is saying sin came to the world to whom to the one man came to the first man that is adam and also through this one man the first man adam that also came okay because uh, we know the wages of sin is death so sin came through the first man adam and also death came through sin so from sin to death uh, you know or uh, between sin and death was all the problems there was sickness there's disease there's demonic afflictions oppressions depression suicide you name it you know every kind of problems and difficulties that came uh, because as a result of sin and between sin and that were all these problems that uh, came about so god is not the author of sin he's not the author of that he's not the author of all of these uh, uh, problems and difficulties. it came as a result of one man's sin he says that that spread to all men because all sin it means that the sin that came through one man actually affected everyone it actually affected all of us all the consequences of sin including death you know it spread to everyone every man was affected or the whole human race was affected as a result of one man's sin verse 13 can one of you read please Was 13 can anyone please for until, for until the law sin was in the world 
vaccine is not imputed when there is no law. Amen. Thank you. So here it says sin was in the world, but people did not realize it. Okay. Sin was in the world even before the law was given. Sin was in the world, but before the law was given, uh, people did not realize it. It was the law that made sin visible. It, it was a law that showed them what was right and wrong. It was uh, the law that showed them that they were, you know, breaking. Um, the commandments that they were sinning against God, they were going against God, but sin could not be imputed or uh, or sin could not be held against people until the law came. Okay, uh, sin was there before the law. It does not mean that there was no sin before the law. No, there was sin before the law was given, but after the law was given, sin could be accounted for. Okay, sin could be held against people. People could recognize or realize that they are breaking the law. And because they're breaking the law, you know, there is a consequence. There is a punishment. So sin could be accounted uh, or held against people. And people could recognize that they were breaking the law. Verse 14, can one of you please read? Nevertheless, that ring from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not seen according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Amen. Thank you. So Paul is saying that reigned from Adam to Moses. Of course, the law came through Moses. And people, uh, you know, it was then that the people realized that sin is held against them uh, because of the law, because they are not able to keep the law, they have broken the law. But even though they did not uh, sin the way Adam sinned, you know, Adam's sin was explicit, ex explicit. It was very specific. A specific command was given to Adam, and he disobeyed that command. And because of his sin, you know, and because of his dis disobedience, sin came into the world and also death. Okay, so sin and death uh, passed on to everyone even before the law, even though, you know, we don't have that, we didn't have the specific command like Adam, yet, you know, we have all sinned and we have all uh, done that that is displeasing in God's sight. We have all broken God's heart. We have gone against his ways. And uh, even though we did not have a specific command like Adam, Adam had a specific word, but you know, uh, the law was given only after Moses uh, uh, came, you know. So it does not mean that those who um, where before the law was given, it does not mean that they did not sin or what they did was not sin. No, that's not right. Yes, they sinned, um, but, you know, um, they did not have that specific command. They did not know uh, that they were breaking, uh, uh, you know, the law. They did not know that they were going against God's uh, commands, is going against God's law. They did not know what they were doing was right or wrong. Okay, so he's saying that you know sin and death passed on to everyone even before the law because yes, we've all sinned, we've all done what was wrong in God's sight. So even though we did not have that specific command like Adam, yet you know we have all sinned and death has reigned over all of us. So he's saying you, know, you can't say that you know. Uh, we didn't have this, we can't do this, we can't do that, we shouldn't have that, we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do that. Uh, only after the law came, we, we know what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. And of course, Adam sinned, but Adam got a specific command from God and he disobeyed God. So you can't say that what we have done is, um, uh, is sin, but he's saying irrespective of whether you got a specific command or not, or the law was given or not, you know, we have all sinned. So sin reigned from Adam uh, to Moses. And because of sin, death also reigns over all of us. And he says, Adam, who is a type, type means a shadow or an example of him who is to come. So uh, 
um, so Paul is saying that you know Adam is a type or a shadow or an example of him who was to come. There's someone else who is to come, or someone else who is going to come, uh, who is a reality, someone who is bigger, someone who is greater. And that someone who is bigger, that someone who is greater, that someone who is a reality is Jesus. He is the real man. Okay, so there is a resemblance. Um, what came through one man affected many, which means what uh, 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 what resulted in Adam's uh, sin or disobedience, you know, affected the rest of mankind. Sin came into the world, and as a result of that death, and between sin and that, everything that was, uh, you know, that God did not create, like sickness, pain, suffering. Um, you know, all of that came into the world. So he's saying that, you know, yes, everything uh, affected mankind because of one man's sin, because of one man's disobedience. In the same way, you know, what comes through the second man affects all of mankind. The sin of one man, Adam, affected the rest of mankind, and also that came into place, but the same way what came about through the second man and who's the second man jesus christ affects many okay so this is the resemblance that he is going to point out in this chapter so he's he's drawing out parallel parallels between you know uh, what is the truth of our identification in adam and what is our truth of our identification in christ what we inherited um, as a result of uh, Adam's uh, sin and what we inherited as a result of Christ's death. So this is a resemblance that he is going to point out in this uh, chapter. Okay, uh, verse 15, uh, can somebody read? Before that, does anyone have any doubts? From verse 11 to 14, any doubts? No? Okay, can somebody read verse 15, please? Verse 15, but the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Amen. So he's saying the first man, Adam, what did he bring about? What was the result of his sin? What did he bring about? Trespass, offense, and he brought about sin. Okay, so the first man, Adam, brought trespass, offense, and sin. And what does the second man or the last Adam bring? He brought the free gift. Okay, so the first man, through offense, brought death. The second man, you know, through his death on the cross, brings us the free gift. He brings us the grace of God which abounds to many or the grace of God which is a free gift to everyone. So again he's drawing uh, the parallel between the first man, the second man uh, uh, or the, the first Adam and the last Adam. Verse 16 please, can somebody read? And the, and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So the free gift that came through the one man, Jesus Christ, or the last Adam, you know, um, what did it result in? It resulted in justification. Okay, um, the free gift that came through the first, uh, the last Adam resulted in justification. Okay, so through Adam there is condemnation, but through Jesus there is justification. Okay, so because of Adam's sin because of Adam's offense, what was the result? Death and condemnation, eternal separation. But the free gift that is in Jesus Christ or through the death of Jesus, 
we have been justified or we have been made righteous in God's sight. And the free uh, this 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 gift of justification and righteousness is a free gift that we receive. Okay. Uh, verse 17. The 17. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, here he's contrasting. He's saying, you know, one man's offense, it brought about death to everyone. It brought condemnation to everyone. Okay. And through the one man's offense, death uh, ruled. Okay. It means death ruled or death reigned. Uh, death ruled in everyone. We became subjects. Uh, we became slaves to the consequences of that sin. And what is the consequences of that sin? The consequence of sin is death. So death reigned in all of us. Death ruled in all of us. Okay. Uh, that rule or reign also means that Satan had dominion over us. It also means that Satan ruled over us. And sickness, sin, Satan, and death ruled over the entire mankind, over every one of us. Because of Adam, we were made slaves to everything. Uh, because, um, you know, uh, because of, uh, as a result of sin, we were made as slaves to everything. But through the free gift of Jesus Christ, we have received an abundance of grace and we have received the gift of righteousness. Okay, so again, he's contrasting what we have received uh, from um, Adam. Uh, because of Adam, he says, we have been made subjects of slaves. Uh, to the consequences of that sin uh, that he uh, uh, disobeyed God. And as a result of that, death ruled, which means Satan had dominion over us. He ruled over us. And, uh, you know, we became slaves of sin, sickness, and death. Uh, sin, sickness, and death ruled over all of us. And because of Adam, we were made slaves to everything. Um, uh, and as a result of what Christ came to give us, as a result of Christ's death on the cross, what do we receive? We receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Okay. So through the last Adam, the second man, we receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And then he goes on to say what will happen as a result of this? What will happen as a result of us? receiving this abundance of grace and this gift of righteousness. So he says, uh, the result of this is that we will reign in life through the one that is Jesus Christ. So how beautifully uh, Paul presents, you know, he says, hey, when um, because of Adam's sin, you know, sin reigned in all of us. And because sin reigned in all of us, the consequence of sin is death. And also uh, death reigned in all of us. So we became slaves of sin, Satan, and death. But he's saying that, you know, all of this reigned over us. We became slaves to it. But uh, because of what Christ has done, and because we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, uh, what is the result? We will reign in life to the one Jesus Christ. Okay, so he's he's contrasting uh, the reign of uh, sin uh, and the reign of life that is in Christ Jesus. So what has come to us through Jesus is the grace of God and the righteousness of God. So the grace of God and the righteousness of God that has come to us through Jesus it puts us in a position of authority. It puts us in a position to rule. It puts us in a position to reign in life. Okay. It basically puts us in a position to rule and reign over everything that Adam has made us slaves to. 
So Adam made us slaves to sin, sickness, and death. But he's saying that because of what Jesus did on the cross and we have received the abundance of his grace and the gift of righteousness, we can reign through life. Okay. So what can we reign or rule over in life? We are in a position to rule and reign over everything that Adam has made us a slave to. So we no longer need to be slaves of sickness. We no longer need to be slaves of uh, uh, sin, and we no longer need to be slaves of death, the fear of death. Amen. To see how wonderfully Paul just, you know, brings about these uh, truths. So in this life, you know, you and I have a mastery, or we have an authority, or we have dominion over everything that Adam subjected us under, or everything that Adam made us slaves uh, to, uh, because we have received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. So the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that we receive in Christ puts us in a place of mastery, of authority, of dominion over everything that Adam has made us slaves of. So we are no longer slaves. We are rulers. We reign in life through what Christ has done on the cross. We rule over everything that Adam made us slaves to. And um, Adam made us slaves and Christ has made us rulers. Okay, Christ has put us in a place of authority and in a place of dominion and a place of um, uh, to be a place in a place where we can rule and reign over all these things. Wonderful, isn't that? We say an amen to that uh, for all that Christ has um, purchased for us on the cross and uh, where he's positioned us and what is our truth of our identification. So, you know, the four uh, outcomes of being uh, justified is that we have peace with God, which means we are one with God, we are reconciled to God, we are no longer enemies of God, we are no longer fighting with God, but we have peace with God and we have the peace of God. Also, another outcome of being justified is that we have access by faith to standing in grace. Uh, so here he's talking about our position, our identification. Uh, we are highly favored by God. I already spoke about this and I gave you some more details about this uh, on, in our class on Monday. Okay. Um, and the third thing is we are in a place of rejoicing. Okay. Uh, the, the third outcome of being justified that's mentioned here is in a place of rejoicing. We are rejoicing for the good things that God has planned for us, uh, the good things that he's going to release um, upon our lives, uh, the glory that he's going to release in and through our lives, that he's, the glory that he's kept for us to be released in and through our lives. You know, um, we are in this place of rejoicing. And the fourth outcome, of being justified that's mentioned here is, here is that we rejoice in tribulation knowing that you know um, tribulations develops perseverance or endurance endurance character and character okay any questions so far any doubts before we move on to verse 18 verse 18 so can somebody please read verse 18? Anyone can read verse 18, please? Therefore, as Therefore, though one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Amen. So Paul is repeating the same thing again and again because he's saying, hey, I really want you to get this. You know, I really want to, to go to, to go into your the core of your heart, so to say, or your very being. So he's just repeating the same thing again and again. He's saying through one man's offense, you know, judgment came to all men, which resulted in condemnation, death, pain, suffering. So even through that, through one man's righteousness, we received the free gift that came to all men, which resulted in the justification of life and also that we can reign in life. Okay, so 
um, you know, he's basically saying the same thing, repeating the same thing, but he's showing us the difference between what we our identification in Adam and our identification, uh, truth of our identification in Christ Jesus. Okay, uh, verses 19, 20, and 21, please. Can somebody read that? Nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Verse nineteen: For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered; the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that in as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteous through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So here in verse 19, repeating the same thing, making a contrast of what we inherited to, to the first man, Adam, uh, because of his disobedience, we were all made sinners, and what we inherited uh, through the last Adam, that is Jesus Christ. Uh, by his obedience, we have all been made righteous. Okay, and verses 20 and 21, he then brings in the conclusion. He says that sin and he talks about sin and death, uh, you know, uh, what they were doing already, you know, they were, you know, uh, even before the law was given, um, uh, there was sin, there was death. But the law highlighted that there is a consequences for sin. The law highlighted sin and the law or also highlighted that there is a consequence for sin. But before the law was given, sin and death was already there because of Adam. So he says where there was much sin, grace abounded and sin reigns, but grace also reigns resulting in righteousness. Okay, so even as sin reigns or sin makes us uh, slaves to Satan and um, to death and, you know, to every kind of sickness and every kind of uh, uh, problems and difficulties, says even in that, uh, you know, how much more will grace abound? So where there was much sin, grace abounded, you know. Uh, so even in the midst of sin, we know that no, grace abounded because Jesus Christ came. And uh, as a result of his obedience, we are all made righteous. Okay, So the essence is this. Yes, that sin and that reigns, but God's free gift of grace and righteousness through Jesus Christ gives us all eternal life. Okay, Gives us all uh, or puts us in a place to rule, reign, to have authority and dominion over every uh, sin, every sickness, uh, over the Satan and over death. So the end result is that, you know, God's grace and God's work through Jesus Christ is overpowering. It's, it supersedes everything that happened because of the disobedience of Adam, because of what, uh, because of how sin and death came into Adam. Okay, so God's grace and God's work through Jesus Christ overpowered, uh, superseded everything that happened through sin and death through Adam. Okay, so here in chapter five, Paul is basically telling us the redemption story, so to say. He says um, uh, he's talking about what happened as a result of Adam's sin and uh, what happened as a result of Jesus' death on the cross for us okay so these are really powerful truths that you know we need to embrace uh, we need to embrace this truth that because of the grace of god and the gift of righteousness we are going to rule in uh, in life or we are going to reign in life okay so we need to think of ourselves like this you know i rule i reign in life over everything that Adam put me subject to, or everything that Adam put me under. I rule and reign in life or have dominion, I have authority 
over every sickness, over every um, uh, oppression, over every depression, over every work of the enemy, every assignment of the enemy, over every sin, over every weakness, over every wrong attitude, that I have the authority and I can rule and reign in life. Uh, and also we need to think of, of ourselves that, you know, we are masters, we have the authority, we have dominion, we are actually seated. Uh, uh, you know, our spiritual identification is that we are seated in heavenly places. We're seated at the right hand of God. We are in a place of authority and dominion over every principality, powers, darkness, uh, forces of darkness, over everything that Adam has uh, subjected us to uh, 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 or put us to be slaves under uh, because we had uh, we have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness okay so um, just looking at um, the contrast that we have here of the first man Adam and the uh, uh, the last man Jesus Christ um, or um, sorry is he the last man? The first man and the last man, the first Adam and the, the second Adam. No, the second Adam, he's the last Adam. Yes. So Adam's uh, verse 15, Adam's sin brought death to many okay um, and um, jesus christ brought the gift of grace to many okay in verse 16 we see that adam's sin brought judgment and condemnation and jesus christ took all our sin and you know uh, released justification or because of what he did on the cross taking upon himself our sin he was, uh, we are justified, we are made righteous. Okay, verse 17 Adam's sin brought us under and uh, in subjection to death, pain, and suffering. But um, uh, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, you know, released abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, uh, which enables us to reign in life. Verse 18, Adam's sin brought us under judgment and condemnation, but um, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, brought about a righteous, the righteous act that he did on the cross, brought the free gift of grace, which resulted in justification, which resulted in us being righteous and us receiving the um, uh, life, which is the eternal life, the Zoe life, the God kind of life, the fullness of life that we have received. Verse 19, you know, Adam's sin made us all sinners, but Christ's obedience makes all who believe in him uh, as righteous as being justified before God or in right standing with God. So this is the truth of identification that he is bringing to us. He's drawing the parallels between um, the first man and, uh, you know, first man Adam and the last man Adam. Okay. Uh, we also see this truth of identification that Paul presents uh, in First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 to 48, uh, and it's the only place that Paul mentions the similar truth. So we would um, um, read it, and uh, you know we will draw out some learnings from that as well. So we just move away a little bit from Romans chapter 5 and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 to 48, and uh, uh, just look at what Paul is writing about the first man, Adam, the last man, Adam, um, the first man and the second man, okay? So can somebody uh, read that, please, for us? And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as was the man of dust. So also are those who are made of dust. 
and as is the heavenly man so also are those who are, who are heavenly and as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man amen thank you roslyn so here's another place where paul is drawing a similar picture like what we uh, saw in Romans chapter 5, uh, where Adam was a type of the man to come, that is Jesus. And then he draws a contrast as we saw in Romans chapter 5. Okay, So he refers to Adam here as the first Adam, and he refers to Jesus Christ as the last Adam. So he says the first man, Adam, became a living being, and he says the last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. Okay, so he's saying the last Adam means in Jesus there is an end to the Adam's race. Doesn't mean that you know there is uh, technically uh, that you know uh, people are not being born on this earth. No, Adam's race continues technically. People are still born in Adam's race, but he's talking about the spiritual Adam's race. Okay, that brings an end to the uh, natural. Okay, in verse 46, he speaks of the natural and the spiritual. In the natural, Adam's race continues. Technically, people are still being born into Adam's race. But spiritually in Christ, you know, we are born in Christ. He is the uh, last Adam. Okay, so... We no longer identify with the natural man. Uh, we now identify with the uh, we identify spiritually with the last Adam, who is uh, Jesus Christ. And verse forty-seven, you know, he refers to Jesus as the second man. He says the first man was natural, so the first man is Adam. He says the first man is natural and of the earth, and the second man. Who is he is referring to as Jesus is from heaven. So he's basically saying there are two races, so to speak. Okay, two races. There's one race of people who are earthly, uh, who are of the first Adam, and there's another race of people who are spiritually, uh, who are spiritual, who are in Christ, uh, who are from above, uh, who are born from above, who identify with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and are heavenly. Okay. Um, and for the people who are of this this other race, who are spiritual, who are in Christ, who are from above, uh, heavenly, for these people, it's the end of the Adam's race. Okay, it's the end of the Adam's race, which means they no longer identify with the uh, Adam's race. They are part of a culture, a lifestyle, an identity, a thought process, thought uh, progression, the thought framework that is all kingdom-minded, uh, that is of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is the second man of the new race. Okay, He's the second man of the new race, which is the spiritual uh, race that we're talking about, born from above and heavenly. So people born of the second man, uh, they are also spiritual and they are also born of heaven, which means that now we are no longer, you know, um, gratifying the uh, the desires of the flesh, the desires of our, uh, <coughs> sorry, the desires of the world. Uh, we are gratifying uh, the desires of the spirit man. We are led by the spirit. We walk in the spirit. We uh, keep in step with the spirit. Verse 48, he says, those who are natural, they bear the image of Adam. Uh, they are like him, whereas as those who are, uh, whereas is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Okay, So those who are natural, they are identified with the things of this world, the lifestyle of this world, the thought processes of this world, the culture of this world is just seen in and through them. But we who are born again, who identify with the spiritual man, identify with Jesus Christ, who is the second man, um, you know, because we are born spiritually, we are born from above, uh, born from heaven, he says that, you know, um, uh, you know, we bear his image. So those who are natural bear the image of man, that is Adam. Uh, they are like him uh, in the way they 
do things in the way they act uh, you know uh, they are slaves to sin uh, to sickness to death to uh, to uh, satan but whereas those who are uh, you know uh, uh, spiritual born spiritually you know we bear the image of the heavenly man uh, we are, so we are also heavenly and the, we have the image of the one who is from heaven which means that we uh, in our uh, culture lifestyle thought processes everything uh, we uh, identify with christ we represent him we represent the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven okay verse 49 he says we shall also bear which actually in greek uh, it does not uh, have a future to it but it says now we bear okay it means now we will show forth so now we need to show forth that you know we are not people of this world even though we live in this world uh, but we identify uh, we are kingdom citizens we identify with the uh, the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven and uh, we identify with that culture and with that lifestyle so he says it's not something that is in the future uh you know our spiritual inheritance that we will be transformed totally to be with uh, to be like christ yes that's something in the future but it also has a bearing now it also has a present tense reality that we are supposed to show forth you know our, um, our spiritual nature that we are from heaven that we are born from heaven even as we live here on this earth so here in these verses, Paul is bringing about a wonderful contrast. He's talking about the first man, uh, the first Adam, which is a natural man. He's talking about the second Adam, the second man, which is the spiritual man. So he says the first Adam is a man from earth. And he says the second Adam is a man from heaven. And he says in Adam, we all die. But in the second Adam, we all live. Okay, uh, and the first Adam, we are brought under slavery to all of those things which I mentioned. But in the second uh, man, uh, the second Adam, you know, uh, we are uh, born of, of heaven. We are uh, spiritual. Uh, we are from heaven. And hence, we have uh, to rule and reign in life because of the gift of righteousness that has been given to us so paul is writing all this to explain to us what has happened to us because of jesus christ okay so look at how wonderfully he just presents this truth of identification so i hope we even as we've heard this truth of identification that you know we will embrace this truth that because the grace of god and the gift of righteousness we are uh, going to rule in life and we would um, begin to operate out of that place where we can rule and reign in life over everything that uh, adam the first adam has put us under any questions in chapter five any questions no okay if there are no questions then uh, we'll end class thank you all for joining class have a Blessed weekend, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Stop it.